Blessed be the name, page seven, the first song in the blue hymnal, page number seven, blessed be the name. Stand if you can and join us. We will be starting on the first verse. Amen. Hey. 
the first service of 2022, 2022. The world was supposed to end in 2000, and then it was supposed to end in 2012, and then it was supposed to end in 2020, yet here we are in 2022. And to thank you for being here. Thank you for starting the new year out right. Um, what better way to start a new fresh year than to be in the house of the Lord, amen? amen. Worshiping the Lord and getting around other fellow believers, and I thank you for being here. I'm excited about the Bible Sunday today. Uh, here in a bit, we'll have uh, some Bible presentations will be given out, and um, the whole thing for this morning is to encourage people to read the Word of God. Uh, for this new year. And so I'm looking forward to it. Let's open in a word of prayer. Lord, we, we thank you so much that we have a reason to sing. Well, we do bless your holy name. Well, we thank you for our salvation. Well, we thank you for giving us second and third and fourth chances. We thank you for your mercy and love and grace, Lord. God, I pray that you would help us today, Lord. We've all taken time out of our schedules to be in your house, Lord. So God, I pray that you would meet with us this morning. And what a shame it would be to have everyone here and have the service. But to not have you amongst us, Lord. We ask that your Holy Spirit would work through the music, Lord, and through the preaching of your word. Help us today, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Maybe see you. Church, our uh, second song for the Blue Hymnal is going to be page number 465. Draw me nearer. Starting on the first verse, uh, first verse 465. Draw me nearer. Uh, had a lot of fun there. Had a good day yesterday. 
Uh, we went out for a men's soul winning in the morning, and I was really worried, you know, it's New Year's Day, and it's 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning, we're knocking on people's doors, I'm like, man, we're going to have some people mad, they're going to come out and say, don't you know it's New Year's Day? But we had a wonderful reception, and I really mean that. Uh, we had a lot of people that we talked to, we're out for about maybe an hour and a half to two hours, I think we got to see a total of four, maybe five people saved, five people saved. And I just had a wonderful time and a great reception. And I talked to one man, and he was, we were, the neighborhood we were at was down, uh, down off Shepherd Street. There's the Keystone Barber Shop, if you know where that's at. Um, but the man that, one of the men I led to Christ, he lives right across the street. And so he's like, yeah, I know right where your church is that pastor, and I've been watching your church. And so well, he never answered the door when we went to his house here. But we go to another neighborhood, and there he is. So the Lord still worked, and we had a great time yesterday. And I was able to wear this new suit. And my mom and my parents had got me a Joseph A. Banks suit uh, for Christmas. Brother Philip, I think, is wearing some new threads today as well. And uh, Melissa, I see you got your whole family's in blue this morning. You're all decked out in blue. You even got Brother Ray to get a tie on. Hallelujah. That's a miracle right there. Man. But I thank you for being here today. And I'm just tickled to death to be in church. Amen. For the Amen. new year. And, um, uh, I want to go ahead and bring these out. Now, we've talked about this the last couple weeks, um, but if you weren't here, or maybe I know we've had people out of town and the holidays are a hard time, but a year ago, we took the first Sunday of uh, 2021, and we had a Bible Sunday, and what we did is we I passed out different um, sheets that help you read the Bible through in a year, and um, you know, it's uh, sometimes people that have been saved for a while, or maybe many years, have never actually read the whole Bible. And it's an easy trap to fall into. We read the Gospels, and we're familiar with the New Testament, but we've never read the entire Bible. And the Bible tells us that every word of God is pure, amen? Uh, not just the ones that are in red that Jesus spoke, but every single word of God is pure, right. from Genesis to Revelation. Um, and so we'd like to, um, uh, I'd like to award some of the different people that have read their Bibles through um, at least once last year. Um, regardless of what plan you did. And I, I know of a couple already, but maybe we have some that I didn't know about. Um, so starting from, um, well, I will get to the platform. We'll get to the platform, people, okay? But starting from this side, did anybody on this side uh, read their Bible through last year? You read the entire Bible, Genesis to Revelation, or Revelation Genesis. Brother Christian, okay? Brother Christian, okay, so we have one. Brother Philip, present that Bible to Brother Christian. Give him a round of applause, amen? <laughs> You know, we clap for people that win ball games. You know, we clap for people that win prizes. You know, let's let's award people that read the Word of God. Amen. And I won't say how many times, but I know Brother Christian has read his Bible through multiple times um, this last year. Um, on this left side, do we have anybody that finished their Bible from the last year? Brother James, let's go ahead and give that to Brother James. There we go. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I don't miss you. Okay, I think we have someone that's going to be here tonight that's read it through. Brother Philip, did you read the Bible through last year? Yes, sir. How many times did you make it through last year? Uh, I'll be down on a third in a few days. Okay, praise the Lord, brother. Here we go. Good job, Brother Philip. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I did, okay? I really did, but I'm not going to present myself with a Bible because this is the last one, and we need to save this, okay? But uh, those are some nice Bibles that y'all can keep for yourselves, or you can uh, uh, re get them. Praise the Lord. Are we, are we just clapping today, Brother yeah. Brother Phillip's excited. Praise God. A new Bible. Um, now, with that being said, um, I have on the back table as we leave today, um, I was trying to hand them out, but we have uh, charts to read your Bible through in a year. Um, and so, uh, you know, a year from now, the, the first Sunday of 2023, we'll have another Bible Sunday. Um, and the message this morning will be themed about it. But I would, I would like for all of us to make today a commitment to read the Word of God. And, you know, maybe you think, boy, there's just no way that I could read the whole Bible. I mean, it is a pretty long book. It's a very long book. In fact, there's 66 books contained in the Bible. And I think about 1,100 and 89 chapters in the Bible. There's 260 chapters in the New Testament. So that's a lot of reading. But um, um, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. But if you will read just about an average of three and a half chapters a day, and you, I mean, today's the second, so you might have to catch up a little bit from yesterday. But if you'll read just three and a half chapters a day, you will finish the entire Bible in a year. How long would it take you to read three and a half chapters? Five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. And all of us have that time available. 
Um, and so some of you, maybe in your Bibles, you have a Bible reading plan in the back. Many Bibles have a, uh, a plan to read the Bible through in a, in a year. But also I have another challenge that I did not give last year, and I'll be doing this. Um, I'm going to see if I can get it done. Uh, but I have some New Testaments to give away at the end of January. So I would like to see how many of us could read the New Testament in a month. To read the New Testament in a month. And that's a little more challenging than reading the Bible in a year. Um, I've done it before. I'm going to try to do it through the month of January. In the New Testament, there are 260 chapters. And so, you know, even if you, uh, if you started now, I think you could read nine chapters a day for the month of uh, January. And you could finish the New Testament by the end of the month. And I'm, me personally, I'm planning to do that. And then uh, starting in February, I'm going to start in Genesis and I'm going to push my way through, maybe get an extra time through um, in the Bible. But I would love to see some people make the commitment uh, to say, Pastor, you know what? I'm going to do my best and I'm going to read the New Testament in the month of January. What better commitment could you make? What could be more important than reading the Word of God? And let me tell you, it will help you. 2022 be a better year for That's you. right. I guarantee Amen. you, if you will just take this, not I'm not saying every month, but if you'll take this month and say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to read the New Testament um, in the month of January. I'm going to stop, and I'm going to read nine chapters a day. Maybe you could break it up, three in the morning and three at lunch break at work and three in the evening before you go to bed. But that will help you get a strong, solid, biblical foundation into the new year. Um, and it will greatly help you. So at the end of the month, I will be seeing who read the New Testament through. And you can do it. I mean, I have um, I have nine or ten siblings that are younger than me. And I've seen my some of my brothers, uh, eight eight years of age, read the New Testament through in a month. And I've seen and they, an eight-year-old boy does not read very fast. And I've seen them do it. And I've seen the hours and hours that they spent. You know, they put the video game controller aside. And, man, I've got to read the Bible. I've got to finish the New Testament. So I'd love to see some people finish the New Testament this month. And so I have a bunch of these. These are New Testaments, and they include Psalms and Proverbs. So finish it this month. I'm going to give one of those, and um, we should be good to go there. Also, by way of announcement, by the end of this month, uh, our church will be giving out giving statements. Um, and, you know, very briefly, in the uh, pews, we have the offering envelopes. And you don't have to put your name on there, but if you put your name on there, we keep track of it in our church accounting. We account for all the money that comes in and all the money that goes out. And so we will be able to give you a giving statement that is tax deductible. Praise the Lord. It's nice to get a tax break. So we'll be getting those out um, within the next few weeks. Let's all stand for our handshaking song. Just a quick chorus. Page 542. We'll sing and then turn around and shake some hands. Page 542. The family of God. Page 542. The family of God. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God. God washed in the fountain. The cleansed by His blood. Join hands with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family. The family.
bring back your seats. You may be seated. Amen. Good to see Brother Ray here, back from uh, Puerto Rico. And glad he came back stateside. And uh, we've got, we see Stephen and Miss Elizabeth. Is that right? Praise the Lord. Friends of uh, Ray and Melissa, glad to have them here and neighbors with a few other church folk. And uh, good to see Brother Bob and Miss Karen back. And, um, you know, I just thank you for being here today. It's, you know, it's a... Uh, this is a busy time of year. We got Christmas and New Year's. My wife and I just had our wedding anniversary on the 23rd, and then we have her sister and family in town. Uh, we we took Thursday afternoon and went up to uh, Bush Gardens. Has a Christmas town. Has anyone been up to the Christmas town of Bush Gardens? And uh, they had some roller coasters open, and it was very foggy and misty out that day. Uh, but we went out. We went up on Apollo's chariot after dark. And so it was dark outside, and it was foggy. You couldn't see the ground. So I think a Paul's chair is like 210 feet, something like that. So we're going all the way up in the front. You know, me, her, and her sister get all the way up to the front, and then you look over, and you can't even see the bottom. And it was awesome. It was a great, a great family time. And so it's a good to enjoy that time. But I'm ready to get back to normal and get into this new year, get a head start on it. Uh, if I could ask our ushers to come forward, if I could get Brother James and um, Brother Ren. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Bless you. I didn't, I didn't give you any heads up this, this morning, Brother Red. I just called on you. Um, our giving verse, for we have a new one for the month of January uh, that we'll work on memorizing. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. The Bible says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And appreciate you, Brother Red. If you'd ask the Lord to bless his house. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, dear Lord. We thank you for this uh, this morning. We thank you for this new year, dear Lord. We look forward to it, dear Lord. We serve you, dear Lord. We ask everybody this morning to be safe and be uh, blessed this morning, dear Lord. We ask that you take this morning that we take up for you this morning, dear Lord. We just use it for your good. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 to Joshua chapter 1. If you're using one of the black Bibles there in the chairs, the pews, you can go to page 142, page 142, or Joshua chapter 1. I just turned the air conditioning on, and anybody's getting a little warm, I was getting a little warm, maybe somebody else was too, and we're so used to the heat having the heat on, um, a little warm outside today. Joshua chapter number 1. <clears throat> 
Joshua chapter number one. I'm excited about the message this morning. It'd be, it'd be a little different if I could this morning. I would just like to talk to you this morning about the importance of daily Bible reading. Right, man. The importance of daily Bible reading. I'm going to use some uh, statistics this morning about how the average American uses their time. And I'd just like to take this message and the time this morning and just devote it to encouraging people to read your Bible every, each and every single Amen. day. Joshua chapter number one this morning, and I'll begin reading in verse one. I'm going to read verse one down through verse eight. Joshua chapter one, verse one. The Bible says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 6. Be strong, and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it, uh, I'm sorry, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. And our main verse will be verse number 8. Please look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The importance in verse 8 of the book of the law, the word of God, not departing out of our mouth, not departing from our minds. We are meditating on the word of God, on the law of God, and then talking about it, meditating on it, and then observing the commandments of it. What good does it do to talk about the Word of God, and what good does it do to hear the Word of God, to know the Word of God, and then not to obey the Word of God? And if we'll do those things, God promises that then He will make our way prosperous, and then God says you'll have good success. The importance of daily Bible reading. Let me ask the Lord's blessing before we go any further. God, we ask your help this morning as we open up your word and as lord we we talk about the importance of reading your word god i pray that each and every one of us this morning would be convicted in our heart to give more time and more commitment to reading your word lord maybe some of us in here struggled reading your word consistently last year maybe we started the bible but never finished lord maybe we read some days but not on other days Forgive us, Lord, for the sins of last year. Help us to start this year out fresh and right by reading your word. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Here, the, the scripture, to explain it, God had used Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and through the desert. We know the ten plagues. Uh, Moses crossing the Red Sea on dry ground. and crossing on dry ground, and after they crossed the Red Sea, God destroyed the entire Egyptian army behind them. Although Moses was their leader out of Egypt, and although Moses led them through the desert and through the wilderness, God did not allow Moses to enter the promised land. Moses, as great of a man he was, rebelled and disobeyed God when God told him to speak to the rock, and he smote the rock twice. And God said, because of that, you will not be allowed to enter the promised land. In our text this morning, in Joshua chapter 1, verses 2 down to verse number 8, record a conversation between God and and Joshua. Could you imagine God audibly speaking to you? That'd be, that'd be kind of scary. I'd be very scared to have God audibly speak to me. But God audibly spoke to Joshua. This was before the time of the Word of God being penned down. Now we have the written Word of God. And we do not need, per se, the audible voice of God, for we have the preserved Word of God. In our text, verse number 8, God told Joshua to speak of God's Word, to not let it depart out of your mouth, to constantly be talking about it, to meditate on God's word, which meditate just means to think and really goes a step further. It means to think very deeply on something. Um, you know, have you ever maybe had a big decision coming up in your life and you really meditated? I mean, you just got off by yourself, uh, you know, whether you just went to 
the waterfront and sat down in the park or whether you just went for a walk, you had to clear your mind and you had to meditate. Okay, I need to think and process all this information. We are to meditate on the Word of God, to think about it, to reason with it, to understand what is I'm saying. The Word of God is not to just come in through one ear and go out the other. The Word of God is not just for nice picture frames in the house. It's not just for, um, for uh, cute little bumper stickers. The Word of God is to read and to talk about it, to meditate and to think upon it. If we'll do those things, God promised Joshua prosperity. Now, Joshua is now becoming the leader of the nation of Israel. If Joshua needs anything, he needs to know some wisdom, and he needs to know how to be prosperous. He needs to know how to be successful. Each and every one of us in here, I'm sure, want to be prosperous in our life. It is not a sin to be prosperous. If you own a business, I hope your business makes a ton of money. I hope your business is able to open new branches. I hope your business is able to hire new people and to give your people wages. I hope you're able to provide more and more and better and better for your family. If you're working a job, I hope that you get employee of the year. I hope you get promoted. There's nothing wrong with being prosperous, okay? If it's all done in God's time and in God's plan. If you have to forsake the things of God to be prosperous, then that is not a good form of, prosper, of prosperity. But God wants us to be prosperous. God wants us to be successful. But what does it mean to be successful? You know, this doesn't mean having money, a lot of money. Does that make you successful to be the best in your industry? Does that make you successful um, to have the American dream, a nice house that's paid off and cars that are paid off and uh, vacations once or twice a year? Is that being successful? What does God say being successful is at this point in Joshua chapter one? The only portion of the word of God that had been penned or written down was the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, uh, Deuteronomy, um, and then, of course, we're in Joshua chapter 1 that's being, that's being pinned down here. <clears throat> so here in these first five books, God said, even though you only have these five books of the Bible, you need to be talking about it, and you need to be meditating on it. If God wanted them to do that thousands of years ago, how much more would we have the entire Word of God. And we have 66 books of the Bible. Right. When we have the words and the actions and the miracles of Jesus Christ, how much more should we be speaking of the Word of God? And how much more should we be meditating about the Word of God? Because we have it from Genesis to Revelation. From the beginning to the book of Revelations, which tells us about the future and the future coming of Christ and the future millennial reign of Christ. Right. God still expects us to speak about the Word of God, to meditate on the Word of God. It's still true today in 2022. It's a clear-cut recipe for success in God's eyes. And folks, that's what really matters. I want to be successful in God's eyes. Because when I die one day and I, and I lose all my possessions, any money that I have, any savings accounts or investments accounts that I have, any houses or cars or possessions that I have, it's all gone. But if I can be successful in God's eyes, that means I can get to heaven and the Lord hopefully would look and say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You can win employee of the year and you can be successful, but what good is that going to do when you die? What good is that going to do you when you get into heaven and none of those things matter and the former things are passed away? But if we can be successful in God's eyes and God's, God can look down and say, that's my child and that person is a success. That's what really counts. How long are we going to live for? 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe 100 years? Last Sunday, um, Brother Morris Young, we celebrated his 95th birthday and um, still very sharp and still in, in very good health. He's able to get around 95 years old. But this life is only so long and eternity with the Lord is forever. So I would much Amen. rather take my life and be successful in God's eyes rather than take my life and be successful in man's eyes. What really matters um, four things, four things that I sort of like to, uh, four questions I'd like to ask this, this morning. And when I ask these, it's for each and every one of us to reflect upon. When we come to church, it's for all of us to learn from the Word of God. As I'm preaching the Word of God, the Word of God is speaking to my heart, and I need to learn from the Word of God. But number one, how much time each day do you spend talking about God's Word? How often do you talk about the Bible? Or about the Lord, or about Jesus Christ, or about the things of God, or about prayer. Is it only at church? Is, is, the, is the time you spend talking about the Lord confined in Sunday morning, or Sunday night, or Wednesday night? Is that the only time you spend talking about the Lord? When's the last time you went to work and told your co-workers about the Lord? 
Or maybe, um, you know, gave him a gospel track and said, hey, this is a church I'm going to, and uh, why don't you come with me on Sunday? When's the last time you spoke to your family about the Lord? When's the last time when you were with your friends, just hanging out, having a good time, you brought up the Word of God, even if they're not believers? When, or how much time do we spend talking about God's Word? You know, if you listen to someone for long enough, and normally it doesn't take long, you can find out what they enjoy doing the most. You can find out a lot about them just by what they spend their time talking about. Because we all talk about things that we like to do, amen? If we like a certain hobby, we're going to talk about the hobby. Uh, Miss Sylvia's out of town. If you talk to Miss Sylvia, she's going to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. And they won last Sunday, and she prayed that they would win, and they did. But we all can talk about the things that are important to us. But what do we talk about the most? Our hobbies, sports, uh, work or our career, um, maybe government or, or politics, if you want to call that history. Maybe we talk about the news, um, TV shows or movies or games or just the, just the vacations and the experiences in life and path. What do we talk about? None of those things are bad to talk about, but they become bad when we spend all our time talking about these earthly, worldly, physical things and we don't spend any time talking about the Word of God. When's the last time you quoted the Word of God to somebody? The neat thing about memorizing the Bible is that I can be talking to someone and they can be having a conversation and I can quote a Bible verse and I can put the word of God into our conversation. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. In verse number eight of Joshua, it said that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, which means that we're supposed to be continually talking about it. We should be telling people about it. We should be sharing it. We should be quoting it to ourselves. You can even get some um, on music CD and get a scripture song, the scripture put down to music, and you can listen to the word of God being sung to you. You know, it's very hard to talk about the word of God if you don't read it every day. And that's what it comes down to. If the only time that we spend around the Bible is at church, we're probably not going to talk about it that much during the week. But if we read it on Monday and we read it on Tuesday and we read it on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, Sunday, boy, it's going to be in our mind. It's going to be on our mouth. We could go to work and say, you know, even to someone that's not saved, you know, hey, I just want to tell you, I read this in the Bible this morning. and This was really neat. This really helped me. Or maybe you say, I read this in the Bible today and it doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to have to talk to my pastor about this one. But it's hard to talk about the Word of God unless you're reading it. Right. You know, um, for people that like football, um, it's easy to talk about your favorite football team. Why? Because you watch every single game. And then you watch the uh, ESPN Sports Center, and they talk about the whole game. Right after you watch the whole game, you already saw it, and then they talk about the whole game. And they go over the stats, and maybe you collect uh, football cards, if that's a good thing anymore. Um, if you enjoy the outdoors, I enjoy hunting and fishing. Why do I have so much to talk about hunting and fishing? Because I've spent a lot of time hunting and fishing. I enjoy those kinds of things. The reason we don't talk about the Word of God as much is because it's not as big a part of our lives. We're not reading it. We're not meditating on it. Um, how much time, number two, how much time do you spend thinking about God's Word? How much time do you spend thinking about God's Word? I hope, I hope you spend some time thinking, period. There is a dearth in America today of people that have just forgotten how to think. And they, they allow somebody on a news broadcast to do all of their thinking for them. Yeah. And if someone gets up with a microphone and they've got a big, uh, big, a big screen and a big stage and they're a doctor so-and-so or an expert so-and-so, they allow them to do their thinking for them. You've got to be able to think, folks. Right. Um, you know, you can't let somebody else that is an expert do all of your thinking for you. Even about the Word of God. Um, if you come to church and expect a pastor just to be this perfect expositor of the word of God that can just do everything for you you have to be able to hear the scriptures to read the scriptures to study to understand them yourself um, you know it's not enough to say that you know um, you know God created the world because pastor said so you need to be able to go to the Bible in Genesis chapter 1 and say look buddy this is why God created the world because he said he did in the right. beginning God created the heaven and the earth Amen. how much time do you spend thinking about the word of God you know, we spend time thinking about other things and solving problems. Are you studying and thinking about the Word of God? Uh, once again, it's hard to think about the Word of God if you're not reading it every single day, if it's not a part of your life. Number three, this is a hard one. You know, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, we were told that the book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, 
but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Then it says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So the reason we talk about the word of God and discuss it, the reason we read it and meditate it and study it is so that we can do the commandments contained in the word of God. We don't read and study and meditate the Bible so that we can have this great um, historical knowledge. We do it so we can apply it to our lives. So we can say, God, this is what you want me to do. This is how you want me to live my life. But again, it's very difficult and it's probably not going to happen. But it's difficult to obey the word of God if you're not reading what it says every day. Again, if your only exposure to the Bible is at church. And you are not personally reading it every day. You're probably not obeying the commandments of the word of God. Because again, the, your, your relationship with the Lord has to exist outside of these four walls. What would you do if, if something terrible happened and the church was gone and, and I was gone and, and, and we lost everything and your family was stuck on an island? And you didn't have a pastor to go to anymore. And you didn't have Google to look up the meaning of Bible verses anymore. And all you had was your Bible. Boy, you need to be able to study and to know and to understand the word of God for yourself. Amen. You know, it's one thing to hear somebody say it, but when you read it and you meditate on it and you study and you know it to be true and you have the verses memorized by heart, that helps give you the conviction to live your life according to the word of God. Um, when me personally, when I'm going through life, maybe I'm walking through the store or I'm doing something and I see something that I should not look at and, and I, you know, you walk in and it just see out of the corner of the eye. Um, the, one of the verses that comes to mind, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. It's a Bible verse that's coming to mind. Why is it there? Because I've meditated and thought about the word of God. Now I'm able to do the right thing. And I'm able to do the commandments of God because it's a part of my life. I've meditated and thought upon it. So probably if you're not reading the word of God every day, no wonder why you're having a hard time obeying the word of God. Or if you're having a hard time not cursing and not swearing. How's your Bible reading? Are you reading the Bible? Because, boy, you take in the Bible enough, 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 and this will become part of your vocabulary. Right. You'll find yourself saying, praise the Lord, more than anything else, because you keep reading it in the Bible. Of course, question number four, this is a, a simple one, but we, how would you like to have good success? We'd all like to have success. You know, you wouldn't be at church on a Sunday morning if you didn't want to please the Lord. We all want to please the Lord. We want we want to take our lives and please the Lord. Well, God is laying it out right here. The book of the law, not to depart out of our mouth. We're to meditate in the word of God, and then we're to observe to do those commandments. But you can't do, do those things if you're not daily reading the word of God. Amen. How important is the Bible to you? And we'd all say, we'd all throw it out there. You know, oh, it's important. It's very important. But how important is the word of God to you? Um, there are things that are important to us in our lives. For me, coffee is very important. Though. Right. Coffee is very right. important. Amen. And I get out of bed and the coffee, I'm going to have coffee. Um, I don't care what happens. Okay, we could get nuked on Sunday morning, but I'm still going to get up and get my coffee. Okay? Amen. Uh, we're camping and we're going to make coffee over the campfire. We, I'm going to get my coffee. It's important to Sir. me. If I do not have coffee by about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, I get severe headaches from the uh, lack of the caffeine in the coffee. It's important to me. I've become, if you want to say, addicted. It's become a habit. I'll have coffee in the middle of the day as a midday pick-me-up. I'll drink coffee about 7. I, last night I had coffee at 8.30 at night because I was still working and doing stuff. Um, and yes, I did sleep because I've had coffee so much <laughs> it just flows through my system. And it's a silly illustration, but it's important to me. I won't go a day without coffee. You say, what would you do if, if you if you couldn't afford it? I would go get a second job so I could afford it. I'm going to make sure <laughs> that I can have coffee. Well, what if we treated our Bible reading that way? Mm. Right? What if we got up in yeah. the morning and, you know, most That's of it, it. You know, in here, you, you get up and you have to rush to work. Maybe you, you live up in, or you work up in a Chesapeake or Hampton Roads and drive mm -hmm. up there. What if we, man, we woke up late because we, we were stayed up too late the night before and you know, I just barely rushed and got breakfast and coffee, and I'm on the road, and man, I didn't read my Bible. What if you got to work at 9, 10 o'clock, and man, I'm having a terrible day. Man, I'm just angry, I'm on edge. You get to lunch at lunch break, and you know, man, you're just upset with everything. What if we were like that because we didn't get our Bible reading? It was so important that we had to have it every single day. How important is the Word of God to you? Do you realize that during the Dark Ages, people would be burned at the stake for possessing the Bible? 
Okay, the Roman Catholic Church and the Spanish Inquisition, the Roman Catholic Church had the authority over the government, and the Bible was illegal to have in the common language. They tried to keep the Bible only to be read by the priests um, and by the by the by the uh, by the leaders of the Catholic Church because they didn't want the common man to have the Bible. Because if the common man gets a Bible, they're going to see there's some problems in this church. And there's some um, some uh, some gross distortions of Scripture. People would be willing to risk their lives to have a Bible or just a page of the Bible. In fact, there was a Bible, and at the time it was called uh, the, uh, the the chain Bible, if I'm not mistaken. And it would be chained to the pulpit uh, because the queen at the time, Queen Mary of England at the time, had ordered the Bibles closed. She said, I'm not going to destroy the Bibles, but they're closed. No one's allowed to read the Bible. And there was a young man in this village over in England, and he uh, snuck into the church, and he opened the Bible so he could read the Word of God, and he was caught, and he was burned at the stake the next morning. These people were, these early Christians, they were always given a chance to recant their faith in Jesus Christ, to recant their faith in the Word of God. And some of them did, but many of them chose to go to the stake and burn for the testimony of Jesus Christ. It was important enough to them to risk their lives for the God. And if you don't know that part of your history, then you, you need to wake up and, and uh, wake up and read the history. But people have died to have the word right. of God, to That's translate right. the word of God into English, Amen. the language which turned out to be the language of the world, the universal language. How important is the word of God to you? How much better would your life be if you simply read the Bible every single day? Boy, how much... Um, you know, the leaders of our, of our city and of our state and of our nation, the leaders of the world, how much better would they be, first off, if they were saved, but second off, if they took time every day and read the Word of God? That's right. right. You realize this is a book of God's wisdom? This book will help you govern? This book will help you run your business? This book will make you a better employee? This book will help you be a good husband? That's right. And a good father and a good son Amen. and a good daughter? This book will help you. It will change your life. But you've got to read it. You've got to apply it. Right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This is a powerful That's book. That's right. This is not a dead book. This is not a book that is designed to be put on the table and never open. This is not a book that's designed only to be read by the pastor. This is a book that should have some pages worn out. Right. This is a Amen. book that should have some pages ripped. That's this right. is a book that should have notes. This is a book that you carry with you ever. This is a book that you should know like you know the back of your hand. Right. Knowing the word of God. It's quick and powerful. And maybe it would revolutionize your Christian life if we would take time each day and read the word of God. You say, well, I tried to read it one time, and it just wasn't powerful for me. Right, because you tried, and you quit. Read it day after day after day Amen. after day. This book is powerful. This book will change your life. You'll read the Word of God. You'll be talking about the Word of God. You'll be meditating upon the Word of God, and then you'll be obeying the commandments, because you'll wake up on Monday, and you'll read something, and say, ooh, man, I just see that I need to do that. Boy, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm going to get this right with you. Reading the Word of God. The only way to continually grow as a Christian is for you to personally read and study the Word of God. I'm sorry, but if, if, if your only exposure to the Bible is coming to the church and then me delivering a message, if that's all you have, your, your growth as a Christian will be stunted. It will be stunted. You've got to get in the Bible and read the Word of God. You've got right. to study right. the Scriptures. You have to know it for yourself. Amen. You have to know it for your family. What if somebody comes to you and they say, hey, I want to know how to be saved. I've had all these things happen in my life. Could you tell me how to be saved? Right. Could you open the Bible on your own and say, yeah, let me show you from the Bible. That's right. Amen. Amen. Preach it. Good. If you can't do that, how will you be prepared when that time comes? You say, well, pastor, pastor will tell him. What if pastor's not there? Well, well, brother Philip will show. What if brother Philip's not there? Well, I'll take him to my grandpa and he'll show. What if, what if grandpa's not there? You've got to know and study the Word of God. It'll help you stay on track spiritually if you'll read the Word of God every day. You know, if you were going to, uh, Brother Michael's a big weight lifter, a power lifter. If you were going to get stronger and to, to, to maybe build a better physique or to be able to lift more weight, you're going to have to do it consistently. Um, you can't come in there on Monday and then not come the rest of the week. And then the next week, you can't do it for three days and then right. not do it for two weeks. It's got to be yes. consistent or you're not going to see any growth. So why would we put so much effort into our physical bodies instead of studying the spiritual, holy, everlasting right. word of right. God? It's got to be day after day. And you'll get stronger as a Christian and the Lord will lead you. The Lord will guide you. You'll have more wisdom. You'll have more patience. And that's how the book 
The Word of God was designed to be read on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, there are many different excuses that Christians, that we as Christians make for not reading the Bible. I'm guilty of them. I, I wish I could say that I've always been perfect in reading the Bible. I wish I could say that there's never been a day that I haven't read the Bible, but I can't say that. Sometimes we say that we're just too busy. We're too busy. I can't read the Bible because I'm too busy. Well, we all make time for what's important to us. No matter how busy we get, we all have time for maybe a, a favorite television show or maybe this or that. Some people say, well, I don't read the Bible. I, I can't understand it. Well, when you were in high school and you pick up algebra book, did you understand it? No. When you pick up calculus, did you understand it? No. When you pick up geometry, did you understand it? No. But did you drop out of high school and just never go back to it? Of course not. You said, I'm going to study it, I'm going to learn it, and I'm going to go to the teacher and ask for help. It's the same thing with the Word of God. You might read something in the Bible and you don't understand it. Continue reading, continue studying. Um, uh, come to church and, 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 and ask questions and learn from the Word of God. Um, some people say, well, at, at, um, in the King James Bible, which is what we use here, um, there's archaic words, the, the these and the thous. And um, I'm not going to preach on it this morning, but the, the sell a big selling point for the uh, modern version Bibles is that, well, we took out the these and thous and everything else is but the same. Well, folks, they took out a lot more That's right. than the these and thous. I'm yep. not going to get into this right. morning. Right. But I have seen my, my, my younger brothers and sisters, five, six, seven, eight years old. Read the archaic words from the King James Version of the Bible. Yep. My daughter Tears is four years old, and she has she, she has memorized scriptures with the these Amen. and the thous. It's also interesting the um, the King James Bible, the, the the translation from over four hundred years ago, still reads the same. Yep. Um, I bought for Brother Christian a facsimile, a copy of a sixteen eleven King James Bible. Now it's had it has the old font and the old print, and so the F's look like S's. So it takes. A little bit of reading, but you know it reads the it same. It reads the same. Four hundred years later, also that this English here, the sixteen eleven English, is much more clear English than we have today. Our English language has been uh, corrupted over yep. time. If you right. don't know that, okay, and if and some of you have lived much longer than I have, and you've known it's been corrupted, and words have changed their meanings, and it's not as clear and direct. Some people will say, well, I don't read the Bible because that's why I go to church on Sunday. The preacher, he'll just tell me what it says. And if he says I'm good, then I'll just be good. What if the pastor's off? Oh, Lord, help us. You know what? If all your trust is in the pastor, your trust needs to be in the word of God and knowing what the word of God says. We all have different excuses for not reading the Bible, but it all boils down to one thing. It's just not important enough to us. If we could think about our days, each and, all, each and every one of us have one thing in common. We all have the same amount of time per day. We have 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. We're all accountable for how we spend our time. We all lead busy lives. We have stuff we have to do. We have to work. We have to provide for our families. We have to eat. We have to clean. We have to get dressed. We have to fix the car when it breaks down. We've got to uh, rake the leaves every now and then. We've got to cut the grass. We all have things we have to do. Our life is made up of seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. And they all add up. I mean, this last year, boom, for our church. Our church has already been here for a year. And right. it's gone just like that. You know, that this service, our services last an hour. One hour of our life, boom, is already gone. Some time statistics for Americans. And this was an older study, I think, done uh, in the late 90s or early 2000s. So I'd just like, if I could have your attention on this. This study was done by the A.C. Nielsen company. And I'm going to read some statistics, again, because many times the thought you're thinking is that we just don't have time. The average American, average American, and this is from a while ago, watches more than four hours of television each day. 28 hours per week or two months of nonstop television watching per year. In a 65-year life, that average American person will have spent nine years glued to the television. That's the average person, four hours of television a day. Um, the percentage of percentage of households that possess at least one television, 99%. So let's just say everyone has a television. And if you don't have a television, you have an, an, an iPod or iPod, iPad or phone or something that you watch on. Number of TV sets in the average U.S. household, 2.24. So most, the average, the average household has more than one television. Um, percentage of U.S. homes with three or more TV sets. 
So it's not even all the family watching Andy Griffith together. It's we're watching this show, and my brother's watching that show, and my sister's watching that show, and the whole family is 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 spread around, is spread throughout the house. Not the number of hours per day that the TV is on in an average home that it's on or running six hours and forty seven minutes. Percentage of Americans that regularly watch television while eating dinner, sixty six percent of Americans regularly watch the TV while eating dinner. The number of hours TV is watched annually by Americans, 250 billion um, hours spent watching, watching television. Um, percentage of Americans who pay for cable TV, 56%. Uh, the number of videos rented daily in the United States, 6 million. This is funny. Percentage of Americans who say they watch too much television, 49%. So at least 49% of us are honest enough to say we watch too much television. You know, the effects of television on children. You know, think about the effects of the Word of God would have on children. If we substitute television time for the kids with the Word of God. They've done a lot of studies um, examining television's effects on children. An average in America, the number of minutes per week that parents spend in meaningful conversation with their kids is three and a half minutes per week. Wow. The average American home. Um, the number of minutes per week that the average child watches television, 1,680 minutes a week. Um, Hours per year that the average American youth watches television on average 1,500 hours a year. Hours a year because of all the television watching by the children, the number of murders seen on TV by the time an average child finishes finishes elementary school is 8,000 murders. They've seen approximately 8,000 murders on television. The number of violent acts seen on television by age 18 is 200,000. And you wonder why we have such an outbreak in a, of, of violence, um, of people fighting each other, people killing each other, people stabbing each other. Um, it's probably the effects of the television and, and how much time is spent on it. The total spending by 100 leading TV advertisers, this was in 1993, was $15 billion. Folks, all that to say is not to preach against television, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Preach it. But... We have all that time for the Word of God, or sorry, all that time for the television, but no time for the Word of God. You know, if, if you were if you made it a commitment to read the Bible through in a year, on average, the average reader, you'd spend about 10 minutes a day. Let's just say 15 minutes a day. We all have 15 minutes a day. According to that study, we've got hours and hours and hours to spend watching television. This morning, I'd like to challenge each and every one of us, everyone in here, whether you just got saved a week ago, whether you've been saved for 10, 20, 30 years, to make a commitment to the Lord to reading the Word of God this year. Maybe some of you say, you know what, Pastor? I'm going to read the New Testament this month. I'm going to start my year off with a bang. You make a commitment to God that you're going to read the New Testament, and you finish it by the end of this month. Maybe you make a commitment say, Pastor, I'm going to read the entire Bible this year. Maybe I started last year, but I got in Kings and Chronicles and all the names, and I quit, and I gave up. Make a commitment to finish it. Start in Genesis, three and a half chapters a day. Let's round it up. Four chapters a day, and you could read the whole Word of God this next year. Think of how much that would help you. If we'll make a commitment to God to do this, God will help us accomplish this goal. We've got time, folks. We're all busy. We all have different excuses we can make for why we don't read the Word of God every day. But if we just choose not to read the Word of God every day, another year is going to go by, and we're going to miss out on all the blessings from the Word of God and all that God could have done in our lives. We'll become stronger in our faith than ever before if we'll make a commitment to daily read the Word of God. Let's pray. Hands bowed and eyes closed. Lord, we thank you for, for your Word that is so precious to us. Lord, we really do ask your forgiveness, Lord, as, as spoiled and, and rich and wealthy American citizens, Lord. We take the Word of God for granted, and we spend all of our time on the wrong things, Lord. We seemingly have time to do everything in our life except for coming to church and reading the Bible and, and, and going to Bible studies and talking about your word. Please forgive us, Lord. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us in here, that you would convict us right now, Lord, that we would make a commitment to read the word of God. Maybe the New Testament in a month, maybe deciding to read it in a year, Lord, that'd be a great place to start. 
Lord, I pray as we make that commitment today between us and you, Lord, I ask that you would help us to stay faithful in that, Lord. Help us not to get discouraged. Lord, if we get behind, help us to catch up, Lord, and to stay on track. Lord, we do need you. Lord, bless in the invitation to follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand. Everyone looking right this way. The service is just about over. In a moment, my wife will begin to play the piano. We'll just have a quiet time of invitation. If God has spoken to your heart, and they take it to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to commit to reading your word this year. But whatever the need is, please pray as the piano plays. Feel free to come down to an old-fashioned altar, kneel before the Lord, and spend time talking to the Lord. Pray at your seat, spend time with the Lord. Maybe you need to commit to reading the Word of God, but you don't want to. Then give in to the Lord. Stop fighting against the Word. Make a commitment to read the Word of God. Make it important to you. single day. It's a little different. This is the plan that I read this last year. Um, my wife did the same thing. We took this. Brother James, Brother James did the same plan. Um, and you can mark it off. It does it a little differently. Um, maybe in the back of your Bible, you have a through the year Bible reading plan. Uh, but, you know, make a commitment. You know, make a commitment to every single day. Find a time when you're able to read the Bible. So I'll have some of these on the back table if you would like that. Tonight, we'll be getting back to our Acts, um, Acts messages. We'll be in Acts chapter number three tonight. Looking forward to that. That's tonight at six o'clock. And we will go ahead and uh, close in a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Philip, if you could close us in a word of prayer. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this wonderful service that we have been able to be a part of. Um, I ask Pastor John to be the one spirit to get back to the word, Lord. I hope we can apply it today. As we in uh, 2022, Lord, this year, may we be convicted in what it says to us, Lord. May we be in the word of God every single day. May we not be a fault out of that, Lord. We have time elsewhere in our daily lives, Lord, but we know that our importance and our priority is going to be in you. May we leave today. Uh, please bless our travels back home safely. We can apply everything that we've learned today with us uh, as we go forth. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
down. Uh -huh. up, just like, oh yeah, no big deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, go visit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you been the holidays? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I had a wonderful time. I really got to do a lot of hard work uh, over there. We got me and, the, me and his father went down in the, in the wood line and started cutting down some trees. It's a longer work. It was fun. Oh, I don't say it. Love it. Love it.